Hey guys, Fishmonger here. I'm on location in sunny southern Florida right now to bring you the latest scoop on my kilowatt. P4400.01 kilowatt. A lot of you who run mining rigs probably have one of these or something similar. It's a device that you plug into a socket and then plug in something into the front. And this gives you a graphical uh, output to display the amount of watts you're using or the voltage in, the voltage out, the amount of amps that you're pulling through it. They're pretty nifty devices. I only used mine for roughly a week or two before one of the things I noticed is it started getting pretty dang hot. I mean, like pretty hot to the touch, hot to the point where I actually had a separate cooling fan blowing across it because I was a little bit concerned about the amount of heat. Now, it's possible I have a defective unit. I'm going to do a little bit more testing on that to kind of verify. But in the meantime, what I'm going to be doing today is replacing one of the fuses on the inside because this little bugger shut off on me in the middle of the night. Now, according to the specs on the back, it does have a max current rating of 15 amps and a max power rating of 1800 watts. But the funny thing was, I was only pulling about 9 or 10 amps from my rigs on this, which really wasn't close enough to the 15 amp max that I thought would be of concern for this. So when this stopped working on me, I, you know, started to say to myself, that's kind of strange. Why did it die so quickly? But it turns out the fuse that blew on the inside wasn't an electrical fuse. It was a thermal fuse. They have thermal fuses in the inside of these. So I bought some replacement fuses and I figured I was going to go through and fix mine. So I might as well make a video on it to show you if this ever happened to you, how you can do the same thing. Before we whip out our soldering guns and start ripping apart this puppy, let's get a quick word from our sponsor, Tesla and Elon Musk. What's that? Elon Musk? Oh. Wait, what's that? Oh, and they're not our sponsor. Oh. Wait, what's that? They blocked our emails? Alright, whatever, man. Let's just get to the video. So thankfully to take this uh, item apart is only three Phillips head screws in these three locations as you can see from the three holes in the back. There's number one and there's number two. And the count taught me in Sesame Street that that next one's number three. This unit just snaps right apart. It's pretty simple. There's not much to it. It's just two pieces and screws come right out the back. And there's not much on the inside. I mean, you've got the board on the front there that actually has the plug for where you plug into the inside. And then the uh, electronics in the back that control the information for the display. And then, of course, there's the plug on the back that plugs into the outlet that you're trying to plug into. This actually can be separated. It's a little bit easier to work on if you take that back piece off. You can get to the uh, the front uh, pretty easily. In fact, you can see from the inside here, there's really not much to this. Now, temporary fix for me here, I cut the uh, piece off and just twisted it together. I don't recommend doing that. This is the replacement uh, piece we're going to put in. It's a 93C fuse instead of the 99 that's recommended. Still good, though, just a little bit less temperature. And I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time to find the proper angle here for you. But ideally, what we're looking to do is take this old piece out with a soldering iron and put a new one in. And as you can see from the placement there, it's, it's not too bad to get to. It's just hard to solder and record at the same time. So the first thing I tried doing was, you know, I took the old one out and I'm trying to heat up the old solder and put the piece in. And, and I got to say, it was difficult. I had a lot of difficulty with this because there's so much solder on the back, I could not get it hot enough. I ended up cheating. Well, whatever you want to call it. But I got a tiny little drill bit and just drilled holes through to get rid of that old solder that was in there. In those two locations, it's much easier for me to feed through now and handle the soldering. So now with my piece in, without having to worry about heating up the solder to, to put it in, I can check for continuity, make sure I'm good, and proceed directly with the soldering procedure. This was a heck of a lot easier to do the soldering this way. I don't know why I didn't think of it the first, 
but it worked out in the end quite well. So there's the unit all soldered in. Um, I do recommend checking this every once in a while if you're doing this with a electronic tester because it is a thermal fuse. So if you spend too much time heating it up with the soldering, you will break it. And you can see they recommend a 99C fuse in there. Um, I have one that's a little bit less. It's a 93, but it should still work. Units all back together again. As you can see, I got the uh, pieces all back and it's all screwed up together. It should be in good shape. I was ready to do some testing. I have a soldering iron plugged in right now. This is the one that I was actually doing the work on. You can see it's reading the power right off the wall perfectly. It's reading the watts right off the wall and everything is all good. That's pretty much it. Not much to it. Just a simple fuse replacement. So thanks for watching the video and I appreciate the time you took to do that. Hopefully this will help you out.